Hi everyone, today I want to introduce you to a nice little plugin called Powerspline by C4D Zone. This is the website where you can buy the plugin. You can see the price is 8 euros. And here on this webpage you can get some general information on the plugin. If you buy the plugin it will be activated based on your Cinema 4D serial or subscription license. Powerspline will work in release 18 or newer and it will work in Prime, Visualize, Broadcast and Studio. And you can also see here that it works both in OS X, Snow Leopard and Windows 7, both 32 and 64 bit. At the bottom of the page you can find a short video that will give you a quick overview of how this plugin works. Once you've installed the plugin you can find it in your plugins menu. Let's go ahead and add a power spine object and this is how the default looks. One thing you can do in the viewport is interactively drag on these orange handles here to change the size. And if you click on the power spline object, you can see all of the parameters down here in the attributes manager. When you add a power spline object to your scene, the default type will be set to square. And the type can be changed to any one of these options here. We're going to have a closer look at those in a second. You have the option to close the spline or create an open spline. And one of my favorite features of PowerSpline is the ability to add an outline. And you can go negative and positive with the outline. And this is really great because it's interactive. If you create a Cinema 4D rectangle and move it over, you don't have the option to create an outline. What you will need to do if you want to create an outline is make the spline editable. Go to point mode and then you can right click and choose create outline. However, this option is not very flexible because it doesn't update in real time in the viewport. You will just have to set a distance and hit apply. And if you don't like the distance, you'll have to go back with control Z and try something else. One option you don't have in power spline is the option to add roundness or a rounding to the corners. You do have that option with the Cinema 4D rectangle, for example. However, I also have another plugin called Respline, and Respline is a set of generators for spline objects, and I can add one of those as a parent of the power spline object, and this one lets me fillet the corners of that power spline, or any other Cinema 4D spline for that matter, and I have two options here sharp and smooth. And Respline is also a plugin that lets you parametrically make changes to your splines. Maybe I'll do a review on Respline in a separate video. If you right click on one of these arrows here, you will set everything back to the default. So this is pretty much what you get in Cinema 4D with many parameters. Below the outline option, you can see that we have a couple more options that are grayed out. These options will become available depending on the type of shape that you choose. And at the bottom, you have an option to change the height or the width. And I already showed you at the beginning that you can also change the width and height interactively in the viewport by dragging on these handles here. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the different types you can use with power spline. One of the shapes is the low arc, which looks like this. And like with the square, you can change the height and the width of the object. And the nice thing about this is that the arc automatically updates. So this would be much more difficult to do with the spline tools in Cinema 4D because if you change the width or the height you would also change the shape of that arc. Unfortunately you don't have the ability to change the shape of the arc itself. However, there's a workaround for that. You could use an FFD deformer for example and if you go to point mode can select this point for example and change the shape of that arc. We could also move this point over and modify the shape.
The other options for the arc are the same as for the square, so we don't need to go over those. The next shape is OGIV, which gives you this kind of a result here. And again, you can change the shape. If you bring this down all the way, you get this triangle shape. The next one in the list is the round angle 2. And we have round angle 2 and round angle 4. What that means is that if you pick this power spline shape, two of the corners will be rounded. And again, you can create an outline. And now we have one more option available, which is the round option. And this lets you change the roundness of that shape. You can make it completely square, or you can create a semicircle here. The next option is the round angle 4, and the only difference is that the other two corners get rounded as well. I'll just reset everything to the default. Let's have a look at the next shape, which is cut angle. And cut angle basically is the same as round angle, but you get a chamfer instead of a fillet. And for this one, we also have a cut angle 2 option and a cut angle 4 option. With the cut angle 2, you get a chamfer on two corners, and with cut angle 4, you get a chamfer on all four corners of that shape. The next option we have is polygonal. And if you switch to that, it doesn't look any different than the first one, which is square. What you need to do here is change the point position Y. This spline shape has an additional point, and if I change the Y position, you can see we're getting this shape here. And you can move this up or down, depending on what you need. And then you have the option to move that point along the X axis. So you can create shapes like this. The next type in the list is circle, and the circle actually comes in as an ellipse, and you can change the width and the height separately. And then we have round J, which you can't really see it here. If I deselect it, it's going to be a little more obvious. You're getting this kind of outline. This is something you could use as a stage for a rendering objects. If I go ahead and extrude that and change the movement. You can see we're getting something like this. And you can change the height and the length of the object here and get a nice little backdrop on which you can put your objects and render them. It's kind of a seamless backdrop. The last option we have is cut J, and that is the same as cut round, except you get a chamfer instead of a fillet. You can use the power spline objects like any other spline in Cinema 4D. If I go back to that low arc, and let's go ahead and reset the parameters here, and I'm going to create an outline. So what you can do is you can add a loft object to create geometry. You can, of course, extrude the spline. You can also use spline mask to create combinations of the splines. Or, for example, you could use Mo spline. Let's add a most spline from the MoGraph menu, and I'll switch that to spline. And as the spline, I'm going to add the power spline. And let's switch that off. And for example, you can now animate the spline on and off. If you have hair, you can also render the power spline. I don't have hair in broadcast, but I do have X particles 4. And if I create a material and put that on the power spline, I can now render this spline. And of course, you can also use the sweep object to create profiles if you want to. The only thing I'm missing in this plugin is an option to change the resolution of the spline. There is no way you can do that here. However, you can make the power spline object editable by hitting C on the keyboard. And what you will get is a spline like this. So it's not like a converted spline. You can now still make changes. And now you can also change the resolution. 
And if you take a look at the converted object, you can see it's a Bezier spline. The intermediate points are set to adaptive and the angle by default for the power spline objects is zero degrees, which means maximum detail. And if you don't want as much detail, you will have to make the power spline object editable and then change the resolution. However, other than that, it's a really nice and useful little plugin that is a great addition to the set of standard splines that you have in Cinema 4D, and it is affordable and very easy to use. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching everyone. Take care, and I'll see you again soon.